Gregory Holtzapple biography so you get an idea of what he has done in his ministry. He writes, I retired from the United States Army as an SSG staff sergeant. After many deployments, where of course I said, if you would bring me through this, I will do what you ask of me, from Desert Storm to Bosnia, Afghanistan in 2005. That was the last big one for me. I always believed in the Bible, just never read that much. Went with the prayer and it will be all okay. When I got out, I felt I should keep my vow to Yahweh. The more I went to church, the more I felt compelled to learn and teach. It got so bad that I felt I needed to either stop going to church or stop teaching. So I told the pastor Helms of the Salem Pentecostal Church, Salem, Illinois, I thought he would laugh and tell me to sit down or something along those lines, but he did not. He said, prepare a sermon. I was stunned and thought, now what? So I went and prayed and said, what do you want me to do? Yahweh, which I didn't even know his name at this point, I went through and came up with ignorance of the law is no excuse as a title. Well, the people loved it. The assistant pastor loved it. And the pastor, he was not so thrilled. I had no real idea of what just happened other than I myself had a lot of questions. Those questions were met with, read your Bible, because that's done away with. See, it's in there. So the more I searched, the more I couldn't find any of this at all. It came down to no answers and more questions. About a month goes by. We're on our way to church on a Sunday morning. Adam was walking home from the church. It was almost time for church. I pulled over and asked what the matter was. I find he's crying. Instead, he got kicked out, to which I replied, if they kicked you out, then they'll have to kick me out first. So, needless to say, they were not pleased that he was with me. We were brought back that Sunday night to meet and talk with the pastor, and he said he told him to leave. He was just too emotional. That's where I found every soul matters. From then, it went downhill. The more I learned, the more distance the pastor and I became. I learned about the Shabbat, the name Yahshua, then Yahweh. In the middle of the service, while the music was blaring, I heard, this, this is, is not, not of me. me. Stunned again, I quit the music, dancing and goings on, and went and told my wife, and she accepted what I said, and we finished the service. But from there, to us, it was clear we did not belong. A little time later, I started about God's business. Invited people, and some showed up, and they would go ask their pastor, and some would even come back and tell us the law was done away with. We had two different buildings and thought the world would accept and love this truth. Not so much. The ones who once loved us and hugged us hid from us at the Walmart. Most wouldn't speak. I was called by Mark Finley to help him in Centralia, Illinois, for a Sabbath meeting, which I agreed and enjoyed. He was on the radio and was getting bad in health and asked me to take over. I said, I wouldn't know what to do. No, thank you. After about a week, he informed me he was no longer able to do this WJBD Radio 30-minute show. He told me, how would you like to hear someone take that spot and not preaching the truth? Well, it got me. I took it. Meet with them and every Sunday at 9.05 in Salem, Illinois, there is this Sabbath keeper on there preaching truth, praise Yahweh. I was harsh at first with the lies and untruths, but now learning love is the way, and found I can now do it from CD maker and travel, which I have found is where I get called to many different places to teach. Miracle, Tabernacle Bay, St. Louis, Miss Frank, Kendrick and wife Wanda, and from that to other churches in Waveland to do Monday night Bible studies. From that, I was asked to David's house to do Friday night Sabbath, and we blew the shofar and invited others. It was right up till almost Passover that we had a whole house full when they wanted to stop. And when they went over Passover, they said, was going to stick with Jesus. So heartbroken, we said, as you want it, so be it. 
We are still friends, but they went back to Sunday school as teachers. I'm still learning and praying and trying to do my best. It's been a hard, rough, lonely road. So I do thank you for inviting me and would love to be a part of this. We have been visiting Jacob's Well in Poplarville, Mississippi, and some of those want to Bible study and learn. I've invited them to come have Sabbath with us and or Bible studies, which three say they'll do in about two months. I'm currently making videos and on WJBD 1350 AM and 92.1 FM Salem, Illinois. Just the servant of Yahweh. May his will be done. May Yahweh bless you. Thank you again, Apostle Gregory D. Holsapple, and I approve this message. I was actually, I was actually a um, Pentecostal preacher at the church, and I told the pastor that, you know, I wanted to preach. I felt like I needed to preach, and he was just like, sure put up a sermon so I went a sermon and my first sermon was ignorance of the law is no excuse ah. in, that, in that Pentecostal church and a lot of people liked it and some people didn't like it and from there it just it just became a deeper and deeper searching for the truth and trying to find the truth and um, I did a little bit with Jim Staley over there passion for truth Wow, um, something. Yeah, I, he's he's a yeah. Uh, yeah, he's well known. Sure. So we went to uh, his conference over there in St. Louis, and from there I got to know like Reuben Prager and Paul Neeson and different ones like that, and uh, so just talking with them and and finding out more of the truth. And a big eye opener was I met um, Andrew Gabriel Roth, the one that does the A N T, and I talked to him for probably. Two and a half hours at the concert, and I, I had my Bible and my suit and my tie, and I, I, I thought I knew a lot, and he said, you know, do you mind sitting down talking to me about, you know, what you believe and all that, and I was like, sure, you know, I'll sit down, so after that conversation, two hours later, I really felt like I didn't know near as much as what I thought I knew or, or where I thought I was at, so that was a lot of soul-searching finding more truth and finding out, you know, what, what I needed to do. So that's where I started about, uh, about God's business, what I called it in the beginning. Now I call it about Yahweh's business. Mm -hmm. And it was basically just finding all the different Bibles, finding the truth, searching for the truth, the 1611, the Geneva, just bring it all the way back to the Torah and then finding the Paleo Hebrew and just, searching for the truth and once i found more of that i realized i thought everybody from that church because i was pretty well known there so i thought they would all want to know this truth and i figured they would all come over so i started a church and had a church and a family or two came over but then they'd go back and they thought i was basically lost my mind because you know, the law's done away with and whatever I'm doing, I'm going to lose my salvation. And, and so all this came about and I realized that all they didn't really want that truth. Not everybody wanted it. So mm -hmm. from there, I had another church and we had a church up in uh, Charleston, Illinois, and we did fellowshipping and like a lot of house fellowshipping and everything. But our main ones end up retiring john and susan and we'd we'd visit we'd go from there over to uh passion for truth about once a month we'd we'd go over there and, and kind of back and forth and i was trying to trying to get them because they had a big band and everything at the time i was trying to get them to come over to the college there at eiu and have a big thing at eiu so a lot of my passion is it really is i, I learned that each so matters it's not masses it's not great congregations in between all that we found one or two people who really wanted truth that you know they just wanted the truth they wanted to find the truth they wanted to know the truth so mm -hmm. through that it it just became that one soul mattered every soul matters so that really became something that really came to heart to me and then learning that 
I, um, the big churches, the big buildings, I ended up stopped doing that and, and just kind of traveling. I went uh, down to Mississippi and they asked me to come down there and teach at uh, the Miracle Tabernacle. So I went down there and I started teaching, you know, a little bit about the, uh, the feast days and everything's like that. And then I knew some friends, uh, the Rushes, and her brother actually has a church there, an apostolic church in Waveland. Mm -hmm. And he caught news of it. And he was like, at first he went, you know, he asked me if he was going to hell, if he didn't do what I said. So he was really skeptical. And I was like, you know, I'm not your judge. I, I can't judge you. I'm not going to judge you. So from that, he said, well, can you come over to my church and teach us about the feast days? And so I said, absolutely. So that lasted probably about a month or two, but the more of his congregation gathered around the table, the more they kept saying, we don't want him, you know, we don't want, we don't want that here. So that ended up going away. And then probably about six months later, it all came to a, a close. So I figured I'm just called to like travel at that time and being so came back up to Charleston and and I found that usually according to the feast days and around them that we go from different places and and go up north and just go back and forth and basically I just I just pray for what to preach for what to teach or if somebody asks me you know I'm having a problem with this or I'm having a I don't see it this way, then I try to find all I can and give them that information. So, you know, I, that's what I just try to seek the truth and, and pray about it and try to give them the best knowledge that I can give to them. Sure. Yeah, it sounds like a lot of different, even church people. Right, right. You know, I mean, wow, that's a ministry door right there. And you never know. You never know how many people. There might be uh, one, two, three, maybe. You know, it's like that scripture uh, says that, you know, one of a, how does it go? One of a family and two or three of a town, something like that, right. yes. you know? Uh, so the message of the kingdom is being preached, that being the Torah that is relevant in our lives. Right. Uh, it might, it's kind of like it's a sifting too. Yes. It sifts the ones whose hearts, you know, will be hardened toward it without even realizing that that's what, the Messiah is gonna right. <laughs> he's gonna set up. I mean, in a way, they're turning their backs on the Messiah. In a way, right? Uh, you know, in the way that they don't realize. Right. Uh, but the ones who listen, that's worth everything, isn't it? Right. That's worth yes. everything because you put them on the path of the kingdom. Yes. That's wonderful. Yes. Baruch Hashem. Yes. That's wonderful. Well, um, brother Kenan, you got any Kenneth? Um, any other questions? Uh, no. I, uh, other than the, maybe the names, like when he's teaching, you know, to use Yahweh and Yeshua, uh, Elohim. Mm -hmm. um, yep, he uses those. Yeah, he uses yeah. sacred name. Do you use Yahuwah or Yahweh or? Yahweh. Yahweh okay. and Yeshua. Okay, yes. very good. Right. <laughs> uh, and and uh, now uh, there was one curious thing that I just wanted to ask you about, if I could. All right. Uh, because I kind of wondered. See, because a lot of the people in the Yahad, some of them, some of them, uh, they they're kind of like they have a vegetarian lifestyle. And right. what kind of keyed me into one of your teachings was, which. Be honest with, I'll be honest with you. It was new information to me. At right. first, I kind of thought, I don't know about this, but you know, the more <laughs> I thought about it, the more I thought about it, I thought, my gosh, this could very well be legit. And that's the honey issue. Right. That the understanding that it's date honey. And you know, the more you explained it about, you know, the bee is an unclean insect. It doesn't fit the clean, the clean insect. And so what, what what made a connection with me on that was that a lot of people in the Yaha are vegetarian anyway. Right. And uh, so I just, I don't know, my, my mind connected on that. But let me ask you this question. Do you, do you eat 
clean meat or are you a vegetarian or vegan or what uh, if you don't mind me i'm just curious right um mainly just um clean clean i um i've tried kind of tried being a vegetarian i guess but i i really like my steak and things like that so yeah uh, we tried well, it's hard to, to be that in the north in the cold isn't it? right right I, I tried it for a while when i was in michigan i just couldn't do it i yeah i did i had the same old cycle you know i said right. i gotta do that to my beef <laughs> right my my wife can do it pretty good but i i freeze i really i I get cold. I get really, yeah. I get really That's cold. What and, to me. Yeah. You can't handle the cold. You can't handle the cold like, like you can when you have a good steak, you know. Right. You, <laughs> you know, it's true. Yeah, I'm, I'm uh, off and on. What's, <laughs> what's that, brother? With, I said, I'm off and on with the vegetarian. I'll, I'll stick with it for six or eight months and then come off of it for a year right. or so and then try it again. So, <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so, um, uh, Greg, do you have a, uh, an idea, you know, in other words, a lot of the, a lot of the, uh, teachings that you do, I notice are kind of, um, they're kind of, uh, I would call them, um, what's the word, uh, exhortations, exhortations, mm -hmm. uh, like from the scripture, from passages, exhorting, right. that kind of thing. So if you have an idea what, uh, you know, as far as a sermon, do you have any idea at all what you might uh, kind of thinking on anything, perhaps? If I was thinking. If you spotted in on a Sabbath? I was thinking about uh, know your enemy, just mm -hmm. going over scriptures about enemy and, and um, identifying the enemy and sometimes the enemy being people or even yourself and what the scriptures add up to what the enemy actually you know who the enemy is and and what he loves what he hates and what we should fall in line to you know to be basically the same thing of what he loves and what he does not like is what okay. i was that's what i was getting that's what i started looking at the other night and everything so okay hey i think that's right up our alley because a lot of the people um are looking for the spiritual import right. from from the torah from the scriptures uh, you know, the Yahad has, uh, the, we do a, a lot of stuff in the Dead Sea Scrolls, too. There's a lot of Dead Sea Scroll research. Right. A lot of other books that we study, things like the, Naz the, Acts, uh, the Nazarene Acts and uh, the, the Didache and things like that. These are ancient documents right. that kind of uh, give illumination on early, early uh, Hebrew Christian or or Hebrew uh, Torah affirming, or people who, you know, before the Roman Catholic Church messed it all up. Right, right. Essentially, <laughs> you know, those kinds of documents. Uh, yeah. So uh, that's kind of, uh, I just kind of felt in my spirit we needed to reach out to you because I felt, you know, this guy has a lot to offer the community, and uh, we could give you a platform if you, um, you know, uh, um, uh, for, a, for a Sabbath as a visiting minister, uh, right. you know, it would be no commitment, uh, but just share your heart. Um, and um, that's kind of what we were thinking. Right. You know? Yes, um, that'd be, that'd be wonderful. Be great. Okay. Uh, <laughs> anything else, Brother Kenneth? I'm kind of winding out of questions to ask. <laughs> <laughs> you gave a good, a good synopsis of your biography and all the ministry experiences <laughs> you've you. had. <laughs> Thank you. You know, if you wouldn't mind, you know, so that we could announce you properly, could you put like a little biography together and maybe send that to me so we have that on hand? Sure. Because sure. I don't know if you've ever seen the format of our services. The sermons are kept between 30 to 40 minutes. Okay. Uh, 40 at most, usually. And what we do is we have the we have the liturgy, we have a prayer time during the liturgy where we ask for prayer requests, and then we'll come down to where, uh, finally, in the liturgy, the point to where we'll announce you as the speaker for the Sabbath, for that Sabbath, and then you'll you'll deliver your message once we've uh, announced you and told a little bit about you, and and uh, then once you finish that, we'll finish up the, the liturgy. And that's pretty much the format. I don't know if you've ever seen one of those. One of those. I, don't, 
I don't think I have. I was wanting to get on okay. when I go when I go south. I really don't have uh, a whole lot of Wi-Fi and everything to use down there. And I've been trying uh -huh. to get one of these little uh, I call it a hockey puck. One of these little uh, Wi-Fi things down there. Yeah. But I, I've been meaning to get on there and and everything, but I just need to figure out how to use this and and everything while I'm in travels, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Now a lot of our liturgy is taken from the Dead Sea Scrolls, from the Essenes worship uh, stuff, which right. sets us apart from any other Torah ministry out there, to my knowledge. Right. Uh, I understand the Yuhad were quite unique, and I'm pretty well aware of what else is out there. Most right. of what's out there is rabbinical, and we're not rabbinical right. at all. We reject right. Talmud. We reject anything that's traditions of man. We, we um, you know, and so we, we study the, the Dead Sea Scrolls and the things we can glean from the Dead Sea Scrolls and the priesthood represented there, especially during the, the uh, Maccabee period, the Maccabees right. during those periods, uh, mm -hmm. and, and what happened there. In other words, the histories of what happened and right. how the the true priests got basically shunted to the side and right. passed out and a, and a corrupt priesthood came in and that got even more corrupt until you have the days of Caiaphas, you know, right, right. And, and during Messiah. So, uh, so we study a lot of that pretty deeply and you'll notice that on the Yahad, we have a lot of different viewpoints come in. We have, we have one clarion principle that is above all, and that is unity in diversity. This right. allows us to incorporate different viewpoints, teachers, different kinds of things, and so that people who are running a ministry in their locale can pretty much have independence. And yet, right. if they want to have an official ministry, a legal, um, a legal umbrella over them, right. uh, that's that's a possibility if they so choose. Right. You know. Uh, and so that's kind of how I came into the Ahad, because I was looking for that. Of course, I already knew Dr. Snyder for, I don't know how many years, a lot of years. We right. actually served in a previous organization together, oh, you know. Right. And uh, so, yeah, anyway, you know, um, uh, go ahead, are, brother. Go ahead. I mean, I'm just curious. Are you a part of a uh, organization or a, a congregation? No, just just what I have, just what I do. I'm not uh, just what we have here, basically in Charleston and down south and here. It's just uh, there's nobody I really have right now. We just uh, kind of it comes and goes. I have people that come, people I know here in Salem that sometimes they'll come, but it's more of a they let me know um, some people I've known for probably five or six years, but they do other things. So it's more of a set kind of, they let me know if they want to have Sabbath and I let them know if I'm here, I let them know I'm going. And right now our biggest thing was um, when we was down South, I just came from down there and it's not really any uh, like a congregation. We're just running into people that are wanting truth and wanting things. They ain't really committed to do anything or, or have anything. Right. But we're just kind of ministering to them and giving them. I usually print up papers on all my sermons and I, I will hand them out. If somebody, uh, it's called Jacob's Well. There's a place down there called Jacob's Well. And we go in there just kind of shopping and being nosy. And some of the people that work there are part of a program and they have problems and issues and just like everybody else. But a couple of them asked me to pray for them and do things for them. So out of that, I've gave them information. And when they get out of the program in September, I think some of them are asking for Bible study and things like that. And they can't really look online right now or anything they're saying. So, but as of right now, no, there's no, I'm just about God's business, about Yahweh's business, and we just kind of travel back and forth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. So that's kind of an evangelist, kind of. That's, that's yes. kind of the sense I got about you. 
like a right. traveling evangelist. Right. <laughs> now, I'm just, when you say Charleston, is that like up north or is that like Charleston here in South Carolina? Uh, Charleston, Illinois. It's about 188 okay. <laughs> miles south of Chicago. So it's nice and cold usually. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I was, I was thinking up north, but I was just wanting to clarify. Right. Was, yeah, we've got a famous Charleston here in South Carolina. It's right. A lot of people like to go there for the beaches, Bali yeah. Beach. Have right. you ever been there, Brother Kenneth? Bali Beach, by chance? That's a long distance down from you. I know. When it was a long, when I was a teenager, it was a long, long yeah. time ago. <laughs> yeah, that's one thing that's nice about South Carolina is the beaches. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Um, well, I, I think that pretty much covers it. I, you know, um, uh, Greg, we're so happy uh, that you were willing to do this interview with us. Sure. And um, uh, we'll reach out to you. Any, any, anything, any last uh, thoughts before we close? Now, can I look? Is there, uh, I guess, a YouTube channel that you have and everything that I can um, look and see? Can yes, you... I will send you the link on okay. Facebook Messenger to uh, the actual Yahad YouTube channel. Okay. And I will send you the website of the, basically the home organization website. We have our own website that's, we're independent in terms of, you know, we run things how we see fit, but we just have the overarching Yahad as our covering. Right. But here in Greenwood, we have our own website okay. uh, for ministry, but I will send you the main home office uh, link and the YouTube channel. Uh, so you'll find a lot of academic stuff on there. You'll find interviews. Dr. Snyder loves to do interviews. Right. Uh, you know, these interesting people that have different views about scripture right. and so on. So um, so I, you'll get those shortly, okay. okay? Okay, thank you. Hey, well, have a great night, and almighty willing, we'll meet again. All right, Shalom. Thank you very much. Nice to meet right. you. And... Shalom, shalom. 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 Shalom.